Okay, let's take a look at building up a custom search with Laravel Scout to hit MeliSearch. And what we're gonna do is use some of the filters that MeliSearch provides. Now we can do most of this with a where clause. So if you were just filtering on a particular column, in our case, that's gonna be a user ID, then you can just use a where clause. But the purpose of this is just to get you up to speed with how you can do this if you want to do anything more advanced. Okay, let's go ahead and just set things up. At the moment, we have a pretty basic search controller here. Let's go over and just generate our migration to add a user ID to our articles table. So let's go ahead and make a migration here. Let's say add user ID to articles table. And let's generate that out. Come back over to this. And let's go ahead and fill this in. Now we've already got a bunch of articles in the table already. So what we're gonna do is build this out. So let's uh, create a foreign ID to the users table. We know that we have one user in here already, which is me. So we can create another user in a minute. Let's constrain this and let's say on delete cascade. So if the user gets deleted, that deletes this. But let's go ahead and just give a default. We wouldn't normally do this, but just a default of one, just so we don't get an issue with the articles table. Uh, when we add this column because otherwise if it's not nullable it's not going to work so i'm not going to bother with a down migration we're just playing around here so let's go ahead and migrate that change okay so what that will have done if we head over to the database is added in a user id column here with a user id of one by default so what i'm now going to do is just go back and get rid of that and of course you can add the down migration if you want to okay so now that we've done that let's go ahead and just create another user and assign some other articles so let's just duplicate this row directly in the database and give this a different username and a different email address. That's pretty much all we need. Let's come back over to our query here and let's set the user ID to two where the ID is greater than 49, just so we share some of them articles with another user. Okay, so let's go over to our search.blade.php file and let's just output the user inside of here. So I'm just gonna do this really, really simply in another paragraph tag, let's say result user and name now we don't have over in the article model a relationship for this let's go ahead and just really quickly create that out now so user and this belongs to a user so very simple relationship there and we're done great so if we come over now and search for something we should see the user who posted it and if we just find another page here that has something else obviously quite a lot of these ah of course so for these they're not published so let's set them all back to published uh, so let's set published to true and that's gonna work let's go and just run php artisan scout import and let's choose app models and article and that will just re-import that and we should now see <laughs> some by both of the authors okay we've got that down now the next thing to do is search by author. Let's go ahead and just do this directly within the controller first of all, and then we'll implement the drop down on the client side. So at the moment, the query that we're making uh, using Laravel Scout is pretty straightforward, and we already know that we can use where clauses. But what we want to do here is make a custom search. Let's get rid of paginate here, and let's just die dump on the results just so we can kind of keep an eye on this directly within the controller. Now the search method also accepts in a closure which we can use to build up a query by default. So let's go ahead and actually bring paginate back or let's bring get back just so we can see the results really easily. And let's do nothing in here just for now and just see what that gives us. So it gives us back an empty collection. Now that's even if we have provided a query. So now that we have created a closure here, this is uh, allowing us to uh, perform a custom search with the MetaSearch driver that's already built into Laravel Scout. So what we want to do really simply is just return and the first argument we get here is the actually actual mini search instance so let's go ahead and add that in and actually spell it correctly let's go ahead and return mini search search and then we can pass the query through now that comes through as the second argument into this closure and then we also get some options as well which we'll be looking at in a minute so let's pass, pass this uh, actual query through and let's pass the options through and let's give that a refresh and there we go, our results come back. So really this closure here is to actually 
perform the search manually. It's not to do anything before we search. We actually have to implement the search before we do this. So we've built up a custom search directly here. Now we can start to use some of MeliSearch's features to implement this. So let's go ahead and say that we're going to pass in a user ID into the query string to filter by a particular user ID. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend actually passing user IDs in unless you want to expose how many of a certain thing are in your database. But let's just go ahead and pass user ID of one in here. And like I said, you can do this using a where clause. But again, this is going to demonstrate how we can actually build this up manually. OK, so let's go over to the MillerSearch documentation and let's look at these filters just here. And you can see if we just come over to say PHP, it doesn't really matter which one we do. We can pass some filters in here and we can filter perhaps by the title or in our case, the user ID. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And this is what happens behind the scenes when we do use a where clause within Laravel Scout. OK, so let's go ahead and see how this looks now options is what gets passed through to MeliSearch. So that's what we can modify. And we know that we want to add filters as an option. And then in here, we just want this to be a string. So this isn't an array. This is going to be a string where we have our column and then equals a certain thing. So that's pretty much what we've done. We've overwritten the options or we've more like uh, more appropriately modified the options before we pass them directly through to MeliSearch. So what that will do if we just go over is give us significantly less results because it's filtering by that user ID. And of course, you can do anything inside of here now. You can use any of these uh, filters to get what you want working. Now, with the actual user ID, of course, we don't just want to hard code this in. Let's do a quick if statement here and only overwrite this if the user ID is available. So let's assign this at the same time as checking it. And we're going to check this from the request. And we're just going to say get user ID. So let's go ahead and just make sure that we bring our request into scope within this closure and that should be it so now if we just go over and give that a refresh that still works if we get rid of the user id that works as well we can of course switch that over to user id 2 as well okay let's just try this out so we're going to go back to how we were before so let's just get rid of that die dump and let's go over and refresh and yeah so we've got collection total does not exist that's just because we need to bring pagination back and there we go. Great. So these are all by Alex at the moment. But of course, if we filter this down, in fact, that's not actually working. Let's just go ahead and figure out why this is. So let's say options filters. Ah, I didn't actually replace it out. You probably noticed that. Let's go ahead and do that now. And there we go. So three from Mabel and the rest from Alex. Great. OK, let's implement this drop down just so we can kind of see how this comes together if you're building a similar search experience. So on our form, we want to add in another item that we can actually select that's just going to be a drop down so let's go ahead and just start to build this out uh, we've got an input here so if we open up the input component let's just copy this and let's create out a new component within here and let's just call this drop down .blade.php in fact that already exists so let's open that up and yeah that's a oh yeah probably better to call it a select because that's actually the HTML name. OK, let's paste this in and of course change this over to a select. And of course we end a select and then we have options inside of the select, which is where our default slot content is going to go. Let's get rid of uh, the disabled attribute being passed in here as a prop because we don't necessarily need that. And I think that should just about do for now. So we've now got another component that we can nicely put over on this page. So let's just build this out uh, and say X select and let's add in some options and let's just say Alex in here and we'll create another one and say Mabel we just want to make sure that this looks okay for now okay that looks fine great so let's go ahead and just modify this form so we have flex and items baseline and that should bring them two up together great and maybe we could actually pull that out so we've got the search. In fact, it doesn't really matter too much. We can have the search button there, but let's go ahead and at least make this look nicer. So let's create a wrapper around these two things here. And let's pull them up and apply that class directly just to them things there. There we go. OK, that looks a lot better. So for the select, let's go ahead and pass a class of margin right two, or we could space these out by saying space x2. I think that should do. There we go. I think that looks fine. 
All right, so now that we've got this hooked up, let's actually uh, go ahead and implement the actual users. So over in the search controller, we wanna go ahead and grab these users out. So we could either do that up here and say user get, or we could pass it directly into here. So let's say users and users, great. So now we can iterate through our users and output this select. So let's say for each users as user. And let's go ahead and end that for each there. And let's output the user's name first of all, and just make sure that's coming through properly. Okay, so yeah, we just need to make sure we import the user model, of course. And let's check that out. Great, okay, so that's working. Let's now actually give the value in here, which of course for our use is just the user ID, but you might wanna change that to a username or something a little bit better. So now when we search, that's not doing anything at the moment because we've not given any properties to the select. So let's give this a name of user ID and let's give this an ID of user ID as well. Let's give that a refresh and choose Mabel. And there we go. That's actually now filtering if we search again with Alex by that user that we have selected. But of course at the moment is not quite right. So we're gonna add in an additional option in here, which is any user. And that's just gonna have a value empty in here. And then for each of the options, we want to check if these are, uh, are currently being used. So for this, what we do is just output selected, as in an attribute, if the user ID from the request equals the current user we're iterating through. There are much better ways to do this, but I think this is absolutely fine for a really small example. So let's go ahead and say request get user ID. Let's just close that off a minute. And we'll make sure that that equals the current user that we're iterating through. If that's the case, we're gonna output selected as a attribute. Otherwise, we're gonna output nothing. So if the user being iterated equals the one in the URL or the query string output selected, otherwise nothing. Let's give that a refresh. And at the moment we've got any user, which doesn't make any sense. So let's just double check this. And I think we might need a just a double equals without type checking because uh, the one in the database will be an integer and the one in the URL will be a string. So that looks like it's working. We can choose any user and that gets rid of it. And you can see we've got a nice mixture of both of them. So that's just the UI stuff if you're interested in implementing filters like this. But remember, you can use where clauses if you don't want to do this. But I think sometimes this way is a little bit longer, but can make a little bit more sense in terms of building this up inside of here, particularly if you have anything more complicated.